Okay, how much do you think a budget phone should cost in 2022? 10 to 17,000. 10 to 12,000. And you guys, let us know in the comments. By the way, this is Pratik. And the 15,000 market in India is confusing. It's all about 5G phones now. And there are very few and limited options. And that's why we have this video. To give you a clear cut answer on the best smartphone to buy under 15,000. With pros and cons. And just to make this video clear and better for you guys, we'll be rating all the smartphones in tiers. Good for the best phone, very solid for close to the best phone, did the job for phone which is good in one department and average in others like a gaming phone and you know it, I know it, don't buy those phones, don't, don't. So first we have Moto G71, now Moto G71 launched for 18999 and video over here, you can check that out but currently for a limited time Moto G71 is available at a discounted price of 15999 and you can get it for around 15,000 with card and bank offers and all of that. And at that price, the number one thing is RAM and storage. Moto G71 is one of the rare phones to have 6GB RAM and 128GB storage at this price. And you know, we need storage. Number two, you get 6.4 inch full HD OLED display. Now most of the 5G phones in this price range have an LCD display. Now the thing is, LCD displays aren't bad. But OLED is better than LCD. Even the display is bright enough outdoors. Rest you get wide one L1. So 1080p videos on Netflix and Prime Video. You don't get HDR on YouTube because Snapdragon 695 doesn't support that. And number three, majorly you get a clean ad-free Android experience with Moto G71. There are no pre-installed apps like Mod, ShareChat, etc. Clean Android experience. Plus, you get a 5000mAh battery, so I have used the phone and you easily get one and a half to two days of battery life on medium usage. Also, it is a 5G phone and you get 13 5G bands. Now, in case you don't know, when 5G comes to India, it works on 5G bands or 5G frequencies. So, the more 5G bands, the better are the chances of getting 5G service in your region and you are covered in terms of 5G bands. Now, the camera and all on Moto G71 is fine. You get 50 megapixel main sensor, 8 megapixel ultra wide, etc. But the only thing worth mentioning is Android 11. Moto G71 comes with Android 11 right out of the box and it hasn't received the Android 12 updates still. Now, Motorola is working really well on Android updates in the sub 30,000 segment, but the updates on the budget G series can be a bit better. Now, I would place the Moto G71 in very solid tier. But hang on, at the price of 14 triple line, I would say it's good. Like, get it. At that price, it's a really good deal. Also, Moto G51 is available at 12 triple line and bank discounts are extra. So if you're looking for a budget 5G phone around that price, that is also worth considering. Next up, we have Vivo T1. It is similar to iQOO Z6 and Vivo T1 sells on Flipkart for 15,990. You also get 1000 HDFC discount. Use that if you have it. First up, the phone comes with Snapdragon 695, which is a good processor. But Vivo T1 also adds a five layer liquid cooling system. So what happens is the phone performs well for long gaming time. Now we did a gaming test of the iQOO Z6 here. You can check that out. It's similar to Vivo T1. Like you don't get hardcore gaming phones in this price range, but amongst all the phones, it performs the best. Plus you get a 120Hz IPS LCD display in day-to-day -day usage. You won't be able to tell the difference between 90 and 120Hz, but in gaming, 120Hz gives you a good response. So if you're playing shooting games like BGMI, the touch response is better. Another good thing is you get Android 12 right out of the box on the Vivo T1. So the latest security features in Android 12 like indicators when an app uses camera or mic, that's present in Vivo T1. The only con that I can think about is there's no ultra wide angle camera. Now in this list, Vivo T1 is the only phone to not have an ultra wide angle camera. Rest you get an average 50 megapixel main camera. The 16 megapixel selfie camera is good. Now if you need a gaming focused phone, Vivo T1 does the job. Rest display camera is average. I think here is where Moto G71 turns out better. It has the same 695 processor, same battery, slightly better camera and an OLED display. So I'll put Vivo T1 in the did the job tier. Good for game. Next up is the cheapest 5G phone, Poco M4 Pro 5G. Now it is the same phone as Redmi Note 11 T 5G, but this is 1000 rupees cheaper. The base variant is 4GB RAM, 64GB storage, which is priced at 12999. And if you buy the 6GB, 128GB variant, it costs exactly 14999. Now, the first pro is it's a 5G phone. And not just that, you get Dimensity 810, which is really good and powerful processor in this price range. For day-to-day -day tasks, WhatsApp, browsing, multitasking, the processor is really good. You can also do light gaming like BGMI at 40 FPS. So for half an hour of light gaming, it's a good powerful phone. 
Also, you get a 5000 mAh battery which you can charge at 33 watt. Usually, 5G phones in this price range compromise on charging speed, but here it is good. Even the camera is fine. Also, you get a 90 hertz 6.6 inch IPS LCD display. For the price, it's good. However, there are two important things to note. You still get Android 11 in the phone. Poco does provide updates, but still no Android 12. Next up, Poco and Redmi use a software-based proximity sensor. So in simple words, what happens is when you take calls like this over the phone, the display brightens up sometime and this gesture of display on and off while calling is not that good and precise. But again, if you don't take calls much or you use earphones, this won't matter. Now, apart from the average display, I think it's a very solid phone at this price range. So I'll keep it in the very solid tier. Now, before we move to the next phone, there are a couple of common things in all the four phones. You get side mounted fingerprint sensor on all the four phones. You also get 4G plus carrier aggregation on all the devices. All these devices have a single speaker except the Poco M4 Pro. It has dual speakers and it is loud. Also, all the devices have 5000 mAh battery, so battery life is generally good on all the four phones. Finally, we have the Samsung M33 5G. Now, if your budget is 15,000 and you want a Samsung phone, Samsung M33 is priced at 17,999 on Amazon. But if you get it from Flipkart, it is at 16,998. Plus, you can get some bank offers to reduce the price even more. Now, the number one pro is you get Exynos 1280 on Samsung M33. It is the same processor Samsung has in the expensive Samsung A33 series. It costs about 25,000. So now, for day-to-day -day social media usage, multitasking, the processor works fine. But Exynos 1280 has some advantages which other phones in this list or price range don't. Like you get a really good camera, you have a 50 megapixel main camera, but Samsung has really good software processing. So photos look really good. You can see now a couple of camera samples. For the price range, I really liked the overall light control dynamic range. Rest, you get a 5 megapixel ultra wide angle camera. It's okay. -ish. And even the 8 megapixel selfie camera is good. Skin tones, colors are really good. And you can do 4K 30fps recording, which is very rare in this price range in 2022. Also, you get Android 12 right out of the box. Samsung promises two years of Android updates and four years of security updates on Samsung M series. Now you get full one UI on M33. So you get screen recorder, knock security, secure folder, etc. But you also get NFC, so you can use Samsung Pay. You can put your credit cards, debit cards in Samsung Pay and use it on the phone. Rest, it gets a 6000 mAh battery, so it easily lasts one and a half, two days. Now, the only con with the phone is the display. You get a 6.6 inch 120Hz full HD display and it is a TFT display. See, if you look at the phone straight, the colors are good. But if you tilt the phone, the viewing angles are not that great. And even in outdoors, in bright sunlight, the display isn't bright enough. Also, you don't get charger in the box, so you have to buy an extra charger or use one at your home. Now, just for the camera and a Samsung device, I'll recommend Samsung M33. Rest all is average. I'll keep it in did the job tier. All in all, if you need a compact ad-free phone, Moto G71 is a very good option for around 15,000. It's sold for 18999, so around 15,000, it's a very good deal. Rest, I would recommend the Poco M4 Pro. And if you want a Samsung phone, Samsung M33 is a good option. On that note, this is Riddhi signing off. Here's a good video on budget phones around 10,000. And I'll see you in the next video. Pew, pew.